Hello everyone, and welcome to another video here at UNATCO. Actually, it's not UNATCO, it's just featuring some UNATCO flavor. All right, so today we're going to be talking a little bit more about the, well, what was essentially announced previously. Now, some video makers, uh, of course, everybody's favorite and this channel's favorite, Peachin, has actually put out a video today saying about what he thinks uh, will be the the big takeaways from the information that we have so far. Then I'm going to talk about a little bit of my impressions and then about restrictions to any of these impressions from both sides as it's just kind of factual at this point. And yeah, I, you know, just going to give you guys a little bit of a rundown since many people are seemingly pretty interested about FF7, regardless of how you know, people are feeling about the fact that it's FF7 again, or the fact there are three hollow VCs uh, to do with this collaboration. People have shown there is an uptick in the number of people taking notice, and that at least is noteworthy for better or worse. So let's first off start by talking about Peachin's overall impressions from the information that he has. So first off, number one, Cloud is looking to be a super stable and safe bet for people who are looking for that. Basically, Cloud and Great Swords right now are an incredible position with a ton of flexibility, with a bunch of amazing Great Swords uh, vision cards supporting them, including speed cards, including offensive cards, and everything in between. Long story short, Great Swords between A2, Joom, and Thunder Astrius were already looking pretty good as well as having rain in the, you know, pocket as a defensive option. And now with Cloud 2, a incredibly popular character, bringing in a off, you know, out of the elemental, the, you know, that elemental cycle and being kind of separate from it, Light is an interesting addition to that Greatsword group. So basically, Greatswords are looking to be great. Number two, Sephiroth is probably going to be pretty darn strong. Yes, so there isn't really too very much to say from the initial impressions that we've gotten. Sephiroth is looking to be at least very, very initially strong because of his new status effect and the limit burst that looks quite scary. But that being said, it is at least for now looking like Sephiroth's big selling point is the curse status effect. And that his performance may start incredibly high, but drop off really shortly. Now, I have some opinions about this that I'm going to quickly share. While it's pretty clear that Sephiroth made a really big impact from the announcement of a new status effect, I'm not entirely sure. We saw the previous Sephiroth last for over a year in terms of his meta rel relevancy. And not only that, He's still an incredibly popular character, and you can tell that by the fact that he's being lumped in as a first of the month character, which are usually pretty big deals when it comes right down to it. So I kind of tend to disagree with this, but either way, both Peachin and I kind of agree on the fact that we just don't have enough data. It depends on the entire rest of his kit. I do think Axe Knight bodes very well for him, but it is something that Peachin has made note of. Number three, Tifa and Sephiroth is a bad combination. If you consider that Tifa is ice and Sephiroth is fire, it doesn't exactly to take a ton of geniuses out there to put two and two together and realize that it's just bad for Tifa. Tifa might be really interesting and might be kind of fun to have, uh, just for the fact that, you know, everybody gets her and, and build her without really any time pressure, even though she will be a bonus unit for stuff that happens during the FF7 collaboration, FF7 Advent Children collaboration. So yeah, long story short, Zephyroff's announcement, pretty bad for Tifa, and I'll leave it at that. Last but not least, Eichin considers Kadaj to be something of a trap and while he do, does admit that Sephiroth and Kadaj may be incredibly scary when you consider into the fact the number of Katana VCs that are going to come in a short period, both from this and previously, and the fact that Dario is a really, really good tank that kind of has a little bit of synergy with Sephiroth and Kadaj, 
there could be something really, really good with Kadaj. However, Ichin seems to think, at least from the initial information that we've gotten, that Kadaj is going to be the one that is not super good. And it could be just the fact that he's not the most popular character, or that or the other thing. But he is in an incredibly strong element, so I'm not going to discount him so much, but more on that later. So these are Peachin's general impressions that he has made. He's done an entire video. Uh, you can see the title below. And I recommend watching it if you are super interested in it, because uh, he does go into a bunch of stuff with team compositions, and everything like that, laying out what he thinks will be important in terms of vision cards, characters, and everything in between. So all of that is a lot of information to get through, which I'm not doing in this video. Maybe if there's enough information, I can roughly comment on some of the stuff, but this is Peachin's work. So at least I'll give him the initial, besides talking about his initial impressions, since he is one of the movers and shakers in terms of video content makers on JP. So now I'm going to talk a little about it. First off, I think that this, uh, I just want to really briefly touch on the fact of three hollow VCs. Now, hollow VCs this time around don't seem to be free at all. There doesn't, I didn't remember hearing anything, and from where I've checked, I haven't seen anything mentioned about it. So, I am a little, while people's opinions about this collaboration in terms of the chosen Thing of FF7 again, or the characters might be something that, you know, can be, you know, personal. I do think that the more pressing issue here is the vision cards, because these are three limited time UR vision cards, uh, 60 cost ones, but still, uh, it's going to be pretty rough for people who are looking to essentially get all of these. If you are going the Sephiroth and Kadaj route, this might be two VCs that are essentially unskippable. And just with the incredible uptake on cost of getting vision cards, yikes, not really. But I digress. Let's talk about the easiest character to talk about, in my opinion, which is this guy, Sephiroth. Sephiroth is an incredibly popular character, and as I've seen in the history of FFBE and Wotive, when it comes to these characters that are make or breaks, actually considering that Wotive's sales are in a slump, I can't see this character potentially being bad. Previous Sephiroth was definitely not bad and was a meta determinant for a while, and while Gumi is in the position constantly selling, er, of creating problems and then selling solutions after, there usually is some lag time, probably about two to three months, depending on the amount of complaints by people. So Sephiroth's curse status effect on his limit burst is definitely the thing that they are marketing this character on, basically. We also get a sneak peek of a little bit from his description, basically that he has some chaining abilities and an initial barrier. All of this to me points to him being quite powerful and very, very, very deadly. While having not seen the rest of his kit, Given what 4th and 4th year characters look like already, and with the power creep that has recently happened, I foresee that Sephiroth will be in line more with Aunt and Doom. I do agree that there isn't much that we can really talk about too terribly much, but I think that there is a potential for solo katana base parties to really come alive with the two characters that are coming, and the two vision cards that are definitely going to support these damage types. The only thing I could see is potentially that the second VC is maybe geared more towards Tifa, but that's neither here nor there right now, and I just think it's really important to that. Yes. Even with water being such a strong element, Sephiroth can potentially fit into multi-elemental parties, and he might be one of those characters that just kind of trumps elemental weakness. I do think that Joom is just one of the major forces that will be holding this guy back from being completely and totally dominant. But until we see the full layout of the eh, kind of 
going to say. Yeah. Now, as for Cloud, I kind of came down on him as being the one that I was maybe the least excited about. Previous, again, if I'm going to follow my own rules of dictation of popular characters being incredibly good, uh, yeah, I could see that Cloud will be very good. He's the other 100 cost from this. Great swords are, in fact, in an absolutely great place with multi-elemental parties and very, very strong compositions. My question, though, is whether Cloud really will be as safe as some people seem to think he will be. For one thing, I don't think his range is as high as some characters, which means that his durability is needs to be top-notch, and I don't see it a ton yet. Maybe I'm underselling it, but I have a feeling that I think some people are overestimating them. I just, for whatever reason, I think that Cloud won't be the star hit of this collaboration, because no, it just seems geared towards villains to me. But I can see why this character will be general quite strong, and a safe bet for people who just want to go in on day one and say, all right, I'm going to get this character, uh, or I got him off the free temple. This is going to be my character that I raid on. Good. And yeah, people who have invested heavily in June, people who have heavily invested in A2, like myself, it probably makes a ton of sense. And Cloud does have a unique advantage that I think is not worth discounting at all is the fact of a light elemental character. Normally in the past, dark has been so strong that light has, having light in your party has been maybe dicey sometimes, even so much that light kind of forged together with dark to make a solo or like mage party, but that was still focused on light and dark element with status effects with BB and the new version of Helena. But now, Dark and Light have kind of moved out of the meta a fair bit, which could leave Cloud in a very interesting spot to just not be part of that big circle of elements that are constantly looking to get one-ups on each other. Long story short, I do think that Cloud will be quite good, but unlike Peachin, I don't think that this is your best bet, necessarily. For this one. All right, next up, I want to talk about Tifa, who, yes, I tend to agree a little bit more with it. Now, as with free characters in the past, sometimes these characters can be a ton of fun and even get you through trials that you didn't think you would be able. Tifa seems pretty good for a free character, but given some of the heavy hitters here and where Strike is currently. Uh, also, just the fact that Soul is in existence. I wouldn't expect this character to be too, too meta. Also, because if you look at PvP and where the elemental teams are going and where the shift, it doesn't feel like Wind will have as much of a place. And for people who are still very currently active, it may change the tune of the elements that they're really active in meaning that wind could disappear for a while, which unfortunately is if it's bread and butter. However, multi-elemental strike? Maybe it could if Tifa overperforms, but I would need more data to highly uh, see that, and we're just going to have to wait and see how it shows up. Either way, Sephiroth being a fire character is very bad news for this free character. And... Heck, if you enjoy Tifa... Have fun. All right, and Kadaj is kind of the one I also wanted to talk about the most. Is to me, he was one of the most interesting on the stream. For one thing, he's packing essentially Sephiroth's Limit Bird, which we've seen essentially being really, really good in the past, except for the fact that Sephiroth just kind of fell out of pace with newer characters that were. De La V, it's general power creep, and I don't think it's a bad thing. But Kadaj being 90 cost means it, which may end up paying off when he's paired with Firebase character. Kadaj 
may end up just being one of those characters who really depends on a secondary character, but water is such a good element that I have a hard time ignoring a character with decent range, barrier breaking abilities, and boost human killer on himself and others. So it might just be generally good. And again, if Sephiroth and Fire as a mono element becomes too oppressive here, Water might need a little bit of an extra push. And as we all know, Sephiroth does come with a barrier. So more barrier breakers that you have, the better. Kadage, interestingly, might end up being a really good character for people to prey on the new Sephiroth. Because even though the new Sephiroth is packing a really, really strong ability, I think that if you can just essentially kill him with the opposing element, it might be too good. However, and it depends if Sephiroth is just one of those characters that can overcome his elemental weakness, which we'll be saying a lot with Joom just having come out. And if Joom is essentially power crept already, well, that's a much faster power creep than we've seen traditionally in history. So while it's tough to say with these, with just the general information that we have of these characters and a couple of the characters not even arriving this week. Remember, only Tifa and Cloud will be showing up this week. So while we get initial data for them, how it could be in a couple weeks will be very, very different. So Globalers will probably want to stay tuned to all the updates to see which of these characters end up good. How it pushes certain other characters out of the map. I'm also curious whether Kadaj will be uh, just another nail into the coffin of, you know, just where fire is currently. Either way, I think that the thing that I think will be generally the strongest, but of course the most expensive, so it kind of makes sense that it would be the strongest, will be Kadaj and Sephiroth together. First off, we've already covered to an extensive details of what little we know already, why Sephiroth is just generally big AoE, first status effect that cancels healing, blah. But when you combine it with the idea of what Kadaj can do with a limit burst similar to Sephiroth on a slightly cheaper, stronger character, well, maybe that might be the actual ticket here because if you're trying to keep your costs lower and you want to run two very synergistic characters that basically only run katanas this might be the ticket you can get rid of re-rays you can get rid of guts you can give human killer up while also decreasing human killer's effect on yourself and then hey guess what you just cancel out healing abilities and reduce elemental resistance which is just kind of strong Ironically, fire and water might be the really, really strong thing here. And if you have just a generally good water character, who knows what the third character here is. Uh, Dario would be synergistic, but it might just be good enough to throw Joom in the party if the synergy is on the new VTs. So yeah, team-wise, composition-wise, it has, for better or worse, while it's not exciting to see another version of Cloud for most people, not exactly exciting to see another version of Sephiroth or half of Sephiroth, it is getting people wonder curious and thinking about how this will change things for the next couple of weeks. And I say that's a positive thing. If it gets people talking, it's at least worth some value. But to be honest, I don't foresee people needing to worry too much about getting all of these characters. First off, Tifa is just there for everybody and anybody who wants to build her. But other than that, I mean, you can distinctly go the water route with Joom. You can potentially go the fire route. You could go the katana route, which is quite expensive, or potentially maybe the cheaper one and the one that's around the longest, which is Cloud with the greatsword route. I think that the characters here are quite split. Now, if I'm to be more concerned about anything, it's going to be the triad of vision cards. Since vision cards are getting generally stronger, 
and the experience with hollow VCs up until this point is bloody miserable. But hey, while I'm going to say a bunch of negative stuff about hollow VCs and their costs, and the fact that Advent Children and the one that comes shortly after Sephiroth here, this one and this one, are disappointing for the fact of reusing artwork, I'll always say this about the vision cards in this game. When they actually use votive style artwork, they look generally amazing. That's the note I'm choosing to end this video on. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. And we'll see who's closer to the prediction. Eichen thinking that Cloud will come out on top, or me betting on the high roll with Sephiroth and Kadaj. I mean, it's the most costly, so probably. Later.